All right, so we're back. My name is Hurricane Time channel. We're gonna be talking quarterback discussions. So uh, I'm gonna start from the beginning. I'm gonna walk through. There's gonna be a longer, more in-depth video, but I'm gonna give you a full, insightful answer on this whole situation. Um, so back in 19, no, I'm just kidding. We're not going that far. But think about this. Manny Diaz is in here, and he saw last year went seven and six with inconsistent quarterback play. We kept flip flopping, and he said, "Look." We're going to have a very competitive spring practice. When he did, he brought in competition, and he brought in Dan Enos, and we did. And at the end, look, Jaron was the best thrower in spring practice. I mean, he's a practice kind of guy, and he, what he needed at quarterback is a guy that's not going to put the team at situations that they're going to lose because of the mistakes, and they can be consistent and, you know, have sustainable drives. And Florida Gators game comes, and we think the most is going to be big for this, you know, redshirt freshman, but it wasn't, and he played – Good enough to win. In fact, if Jeff Thomas catches that contested catch, we're not sitting here and talking about quarterback discussions. We're not. Okay. Miami's probably maybe a one-loss team. I mean, I, I see that momentum as completely being undefeated at this point. I mean, it's just huge. But it didn't happen. So you move on, and for the rest of the season, he doesn't throw a single pick, has ridiculous stats, and it's a, you know, a dink and dunk kind of offense that Enos is bringing that's kind of unfortunate but hey, look it doesn't give any mistakes and it's it's working but then comes Virginia Tech game and he throws three picks now Nikosi Perry fans be honest with me if Nikosi Perry threw three interceptions and was pulled after having no interceptions the whole season and had that kind of stats you'd be mad and fuming at the mouth right now and yeah, Jaron fans are also mad and foaming at the mouth. Um, I'm not, though. I, I'm not. I really am not. But when it happened immediately, I was like, are you kidding me? Come on. Like, you said you're going to pick one guy and be consistent with him. What I am happy with, though, is for the rest of the game, he stayed with Perry. I was glad about that. You better darn do that. But, I mean, Perry was in this situation last year we saw, and he was yank. Left all of us angry. So, um, now this injury story is coming about for Virginia game. I, I don't buy it. I mean, I think he's a little bit injured, but honestly, if Perry's not in our roster... Um, I think Jaron's starting for Virginia game. But Perry comes in Virginia game, and this this is my other only frustration. Now, Perry threw us back into the Virginia Tech game, and he did great. I, I loved what I saw from him. It was awesome. It was epic. Um, my only last frustration note on the Jaron bandwagon fan, because I've been a Jaron fan, I'm going to stick to being a Jaron fan, but the amount of under center Perry was put under was not nearly as much as Jaron. I mean, he was so much more in shotgun. Are you kidding me? We were asking for the whole time. And he kind of had to be after that score. But, you know, um, and then the Virginia game, you know, adjustments were somewhat made, I guess. He was still under center a bit, but nowhere near close to what Jaron had to deal with. I just, it wasn't so. Um, so I'm a little frustrated about that. But I am a Miami Hurricanes fan before I'm a Jaron Williams fan. And don't, be sitting here and thinking this video is about Anton dislikes Nikos Perry because I don't. Um, this is where I pivot back on to where we're building here. I think Miami Diaz made the exact right decision for picking Jaron to start. But as the season has progressed, I think Perry being put in was exactly what needed to be done. Um, the offensive line was supposed to be not as bad. It's supposed to be slightly improved. It's supposed to be, it, it's abysmal. I mean, Dead last in conference. I don't care. What stats you bring to me, that's just awful. It's abysmal. Um, and I said this before the announcing quarterback was announced for the season is Perry might win it just because the offensive line is so bad. It may not be even up to the quarterbacks. It's up to what the offensive line gives us. Um, because Jaron cannot do what Nikosi Perry can with a destructive offensive protection. I mean, it's just impossible. So now we're looking at our next game, Georgia Tech. And Diaz is saying, I'm sick with Jaron. He's our guy, but uh, Perry, you know, he's going to push him. I, I, I'm okay with that. Now, guys, look, you're thrown off by it. You don't like it. I agree with you. I think Nikosi Perry should darn be starter. I mean, no question about it. He threw us into several ball games and then won us that game and brings a certain asset that Jaron just doesn't. It, he does. And the thing is, is tweaking is his vertical throws. We get more of them, and there were definitely drops, but then there were a couple of those kind of like, ah. Uh, but Jaron, like, he was supposed to bring that element, but he was given a lot less chances than when he was. He either threw interceptions in that game, or he just didn't make it. 
So I'm not sure what's going on there. I would love to see a, a lot more deep throws with Jaron, see what's up with that. But again, with us offensive line, Nikosi Perry is the guy. Um, so for all those that are thinking, why the heck he won't name him? Why is he putting Jaron? He's putting competition. Because imagine if Perry is called a starter. Jaron's depressed he lost it. Perry's con content that he won it. Now at this point, both are battling to the max. Uh, regardless, I think and predict that Perry's running out there. I don't care what happens in this practices right now perry is running out their george tech game and unless he creates some new mistakes and issues that we haven't seen from him before um he's gonna stay there um and he should this offense is a lot more lethal than it is with jaron williams and this offensive line it just is that's the fact of the matter it's it's unfortunate but that's the problem it's what it is and that guys i started watching miami for hurricanes football and following it in sixth grade uh, which Jaron, I believe, would have been like in fifth grade then, and Nikosi would have been in sixth grade with me. I was a Miami Hurricanes fan. Was I a Nikosi Perry fan or a Jaron Williams fan? I didn't know them. Didn't see them. I'm a Hurricanes fan first. Miami Hurricanes are in the best position when Nikosi Perry is starting because of our awful offensive line. And it should stay that way until he starts making mistakes. Then you may or may not shuffle on. But you got to stay with your guy. I don't care who it is. You got to stick with him. So Diaz is in a difficult situation where... Mistakes are being made. He doesn't want to keep flip-flopping around, but he's got to stick with a guy. Um, so that's why he's pushing Jaron to the max and basically giving him a, show me a reason why you shouldn't be starter. And uh, with the whole health thing, you know, all that, I, I don't like it as an excuse. I get it. It's kind of for the opponent not to know and really the fan base to discuss. Um, but I think, like I said, Perry's not on the roster. Jaron is starting. Perry's on the roster. Jaron's got to win this job back. Um, and whatever he shows in practice has got to be there. I don't think he's going to be able to. I, he is like, he's got a sore shoulder, but I don't think he can not play in games. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I am super excited to see a uh, Perry style offense. He did runs that Jaron just didn't. He was able to maneuver around this abysmal offensive line. Like Jaron couldn't. Nikosi Perry should be the starter. Whether I'm a Jaron fan or not, I'm a Hurricanes fan. Miami's the most lethal when Jaron is not on the field, but Perry is. That's just the fact of the matter. They say best 11 man on the field. That's what it is. Now, uh, from the coast of Perry, I want to see tuned accuracy. Enos clearly did some improvements on him. You already saw some of it. Um, there could be more. And I don't know what it is. I, I will, <laughs> the only argument I can give explaining this, uh, with these drop passes, we always talked about Jaron's zip on the ball. It's just different. There is a type of spiral that's easier to catch, but that's like a 5-10%. I mean, it's not huge for a wide receiver. If you're a wide receiver, you catch the bank ball. You catch, it's a freaking piece of gold. Um, but I think Jaron's balls are just kind of easier to catch. He still had drops also for him as well, but not nearly as much as Perry. Uh, maybe that's the only reason. I don't know if it's just bad luck what's going on with those drop passes every time Perry gets out there. Um, but it, if those wide receivers got to help him out, um, I, I think this, this offense looks a lot more lethal with that. Now, big pictures thing. Um, Diaz has hit struggles, and we all thought it would be one and two loss uh, season, but um, finally got a Division One win, and I think this is the momentum train that needs to start going. If you think about it, we're literally three drives away from being undefeated, and with Nikosi Perry's it factor and us figuring out with this offensive line, I'm really hoping the pressure is on Dan Enos because. We had such expectations, and he's matched them for our quarterback situation, but has been absolutely abysmal at play calling. I, I just don't get it. Uh, on the defensive side, it was completely abysmal. With Diaz took it under his, uh, you know, wing and just said, "This is what's going to be done." I don't believe. I'm sorry, I'm not buying into the fact that Blake Baker still called the play. And if he did, like I, I think Diaz did a whole bunch more than what they're saying. Um, I don't think Blake Baker stays after this season. I don't think. I think Danny. Uh, um, he needs to prove something to Manny Diaz as well. Um, it's it's just, I, I really think that the way that Diaz has been conducting himself and the CEO mentality, that it's it's winner get out of here, you know, type of thing. So we'll see. I mean, I don't want a staff to leave and keep switching. I want it to be stable, but um, this defense is just not where it needs to be under Blake Baker. Danny knows I can see this offense becoming what it needs to be, but um, he really needs to be evolving it to modern day college football stuff. So. Um, I think he's really stressed with his offensive line, and he just wants to call whatever he wants to. But he said he's going to build this offense around the player types that we have, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But 
Uh, it is what it is. I can't wait till the Georgia Tech game, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think about my talk about Nikosi Perry and Jaron? Your thoughts and insights on how Diaz has, you know, dealt with this situation, how, what his decisions have been, and who you think is going to be rolling onto the field at that George Tech game. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe. Guys, at the end of the day, we know it's always all about the you.